Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of UA Eats. Sorry for the loud noise. I'm right next to the highway, but I am still in Vegas, and I am at the oldest steakhouse in Vegas, and there's lots of fancy restaurants, including steakhouses in Vegas, so that's saying a lot. I'm at the Golden Steer, 15 minutes before they open at 4.15 right now. Now the Golden Steer is not only the oldest steakhouse in Vegas, it's also the most famous by a mile. This place was once a hangout spot for lots of big names whenever they were in Vegas. I'm talking people like Elvis, Nat King Cole, and Frank Sinatra. Now I got here 15 to 20 minutes before they opened, but uh, it looks like I'm a little bit out of luck. The internet said that it would be pretty sparse and I should be able to get in as a walk-in at the bar. But it looks like there's already a pretty long line of people waiting to walk in, so... I could be out of luck, but let's do our best. Let's hop in line and see if we can get in and review this place. All right, so we finally got inside the Golden Steer. It was pretty chaotic outside. They don't really have a very clear system of the line. People were forming two lines and you kind of just, you know, it pretty much is just first come first serve. But this bar seating area, you can kind of just slide right in. So, you know, if the bar is open, once you're able to get into the restaurant, you can just sit, you know, just grab a seat right away. While all the tables, I think they're waiting for reservations and it's a little more complicated but the bar is definitely more of a walk-in situation. So if you have a smaller party, like one or two people, a pretty good tip. But let's take a look at the menu that entertained Sinatra, Elvis, and Nat King Cole, among many others. So they're really, really plugging their history there. Really, really proud of their history. Prime aged corn fed beef, can't wait. And it looks like they're most well known for prime rib, New York, I'm guessing that's New York Strip, and filet of beef, I'm guessing that's filet mignon. I'm personally not really a big prime rib guy, but I do love New York Strip. Filet mignon a little bit less, so we're probably gonna go with the New York Strip. Not the biggest menu, this place kind of reminds me of Sparks, where they have not a small menu, but not a, not a large one either, like a perfect size. You know, all of these apps look pretty solid. I hear good things about this French onion soup, but this garlic bread is a signature garlic bread, so maybe I should go with that. Now they say their prime rib is good, their New York strip, and their filet mignon. You know what, let's ask the server what they recommend and go with that, but I'm leaning towards special New York cut, New York strip. I don't see a dessert menu. I don't see any desserts, but maybe they have a separate dessert menu, so. Let's order, why don't we? Can't wait to dine exactly where Sinatra dined decades ago. Which of these would you recommend for the apps, like soups or salad? Um, I, I, I well, I don't think it's that kind of our area. Um, we still do make soup. soup is also nice as well. Oh, okay. The Caesar salad is famous? Yes. All right, I'll go with that. And uh, which of the steaks are you guys probably known for? Um, our ribeye, our bone ribeye. Okay. All right, if that's the most popular, I'll go with that. The ribeye. Uh, medium rare. Uh, garlic butter on the steak, you said? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, do, most people, do most people do that? Oh, okay. All right, you might come into a game with a game plan, but you gotta be like Peyton Manning. You gotta be willing to audible and adjust on the fly. The menu was really plugging the prime rib New York strip and the filet mignon but the server just told me that the ribeye is what is most popular here. So we went with that, and she said the Caesar salad is also what they're known for. So, let's trust her judgment. Okay, after about five minutes, our bread and butter has arrived. And as we always do on this channel, we do not neglect the bread and the butter, even if it is complimentary. So, looks like it's a few rolls. There's a bit of a crust, but it's not looking super crispy. You know, it's not the kind of crust from, have you guys seen Ratatouille? 
it's not the kind of crust that, you know, when you press on it, it like flakes and makes some beautiful sounds like from ratatouille, you know, like those beautiful bread crunch sounds. Let's give it a try, why don't we? This butter is kind of like dippable. It's a really smooth butter, but let's spread it just to, you know, be a little bit more civilized about how we go about it. All right. Mmm. Mmm. The bottom is actually crispier than the top. I shouldn't have pressed the top. The top is nice and soft, but the bottom is where the crispy part is. The bottom... Well, I don't know if you were able to hear, but the bottom flakes apart more in the way that, you know, I projected that it would based off of that Ratatouille movie, you know? And the inside is just so fluffy and airy and it's soft on top, soft and pillowy, but not like it's just chock full of yeast, you know? Not like it's just air and nothing else in this bread. It's a perfect combination of softness, pillowiness, and crunchiness. Let's rub some more butter on this and let's give this a try. Really, really, really smooth butter. Hmm, can't recommend this bread and butter enough. But let's not fill up too much on starch for now. After all, we have two courses coming. So, you know, we'll snack on this as we wait maybe a little bit, but we gotta wait for our salad and our steak. So once again, we play the waiting game. Yep. Nah, it's okay, go ahead. Excellent. I'll get you some pepper too, one moment. Oh, okay. Tell me when. Sure. Oh, that's good. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Now apparently they're really known for this Caesar salad here. I'm a big fan of Caesar salad and I don't often have bad Caesar salads. Even mid Caesar salads are above mid, above average. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. If this Caesar salad was so good that Sinatra, Nat King Cole, and Elvis had to eat here every time they were in town. You know that I got to try it. Looking pretty fresh, and those croutons are looking pretty crunchy and yummy as well, so... Let's take a bite and see how it is. Oh, it's very good. You know, I wasn't really expecting too much because I thought Caesar salad is just Caesar salad, right? But, you know, their dressing is fire. I mean, it just looks like an ordinary Caesar salad, right? Like when I got it, I was like, okay, I mean, I've seen this millions of times before. Mo, well, not millions, maybe like dozens, but the devil's in the details. And it's all about this dressing. This dressing recipe must be on their lock and key because, you know, it tastes like Caesar salad dressing, but it just tastes, uh, something about it just tastes great. Let me try to describe it. I feel like it's like well balanced. Like I've had Caesar salads that were more heavy one way or the other, sometimes too acidic, not so much here. It just works perfectly in harmony. It tastes like fresh. And what better pairing to a fresh tasting dressing than really fresh lettuce. And the amount of coating on the salad is also perfect. Not too heavy, not too light. It's like the perfect amount where you have flavor in every bite, but it's not like the whole thing is wet and you know, it defeats the whole point of eating salad, you know, because you're dousing it in like a thousand calories. Let's try one of the croutons because the croutons are looking pretty good. I like the color on them. I don't think I'll be able to stab them. They're like, not really giving much. I'll just have to perfectly balance it like this. Mmm. Oh. Just listen to that. They're so crunchy. You can just hear that crunch through the mic, I'm sure. But besides the crunchiness, the bread that they use for these croutons is just so delicious. Like it's got great buttery flavor, kind of like a garlic bread flavor, 
it's excellent. And I bet if I combine it with some of the lettuce, I just know it's gonna be even better. It's like the croutons are pretty buttery and pretty rich. And then the cool, fresh lettuce kind of balances out that richness and that, I want to say like kind of garlic bread flavor and it really goes well. We're off to a great start so far with the bread and the salad. So I'm going to mop this up and then, and then I can't wait for my steak. Okay, so our ribeye steak just arrived and it looks like the ribeye here, you know, they said do you want garlic butter on it? They were not kidding. It comes with a huge helping of garlic butter right on top. I kind of wish I had requested this on the side. I mean, that's a lot of butter and a lot of garlic butter specifically, but I love steak and I especially love ribeye steak and this is a beautiful looking ribeye steak if I've ever seen one. It doesn't look like there's an even sear across the whole steak, but there's kind of bits and pieces of sear. So perhaps this steak was grilled, perhaps? Like that kind of looks like grill marks, right? So allowing that delicious smoky flavor to penetrate, you know? Let's dig in, why don't we, to our delicious ribeye steak. First, let's see if there's a sear on the bottom as well as the top. There are grill marks on both sides. So I was right, this steak was grilled. So not cooked on a flat top or a cast iron. And let's try to take a bite on the side here, a part of the steak that does not seem to have the garlic butter or not as much of it at least. All right, first bite. Mmm. Oh, she was right. That is a very marbled, very tender, very fatty, not fat bomb, like evenly fat distributed piece of ribeye steak. Oh, need to take more bites for science, of course. Let's get a piece here, closer to the bone. That's often the good spot. Oh man, I love steak so much and ribeye steak I especially like. Very good. Very good. Sorry. No, I make weird faces when I eat. Sorry. <laughs> it finally happened. When I enjoy food, like my face will twist up and they were afraid that something was wrong with it. But no, it was the opposite. Absolutely delicious. And I was right. This part by the bone is the best part. So juicy and way better than the other part. Now let's cut a little bit deeper, why don't we? And try some more of the garlic butter. All right, this part was soaked in more of the garlic butter and some of it ran off, but take my word for it, it was soaked more earlier. Mm. That was good, although I think I kind of preferred the other two pieces that I ate. In hindsight, I wish I didn't ask for the garlic butter. I mean, it's very good, don't get me wrong, but I feel like the two pieces that I ate that had less of the garlic butter, you definitely could taste the amazing flavor of the meat itself. The amazing marbling of the meat itself. It's cooked beautifully, it's juicy, it's just so tender, it like pretty much melts in your mouth. Some steaks, you really gotta saw pieces off. Not this ribeye. You know, you really just kinda gotta move your knife back and forth and it kinda cuts itself. Honestly, the garlic butter almost like masks the natural flavor of this corn-fed beef. And let me tell you guys one thing. I mean, there's like a whole movement we all know about grass-fed beef. You know, grass-fed beef tends to be more lean, tends to be more gamey, but when beef is fed corn, it tends to be fattier, it tends to be more marbled. We can have a separate conversation about the ethics of grass-fed beef or the environmental impact versus corn-fed. You know, and I totally am sympathetic to those arguments and you know, but there is no contest when it comes to the taste. Like, I'm not gonna lie when it comes to which one tastes better. The only thing, and this is once again a huge nitpick, because they didn't cook it on a flat top or a cast iron, no even sear throughout both surfaces, 
you kind of just get bits and pieces of these charred bits from the grilling. But honestly, it might have been worth it because the smoke from the grill permeates into the meat, flavoring it even more. Wow, this is a real fatty piece. Ribeye's not for everyone, but it is for me. If it's for you too, let me know below. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, I mean, look at all the juice coming out when I'm cutting into it. Okay, maybe it could have rested a little bit longer. You know, maybe it didn't rest long enough. That's why I'm cutting into it and all the juices are coming out. But even that being said, it is still just so incredibly juicy. Just look at how incredibly juicy it is. Mm. All right, since we came all the way out here to Vegas, let's try one more before we go. I mean, this was just so outstanding. This trip was already a success, but let's try the foie mignon and then we'll give our final verdict. Hi, uh, yes, very, very good. Uh, I'm gonna take this to go. Uh, can I try one more thing? So I'll go with the uh, foie mignon. Uh, medium, uh, eight ounce, uh, medium rare. Uh, that's it. I'll tell you a funny story about this place. Like 30 years ago, my dad owned a bar on Boulder Highway. The chef was Greek, his name was George. My dad used to pay him cash for all the trimming. So they would cut their own steaks here. So you know like on the tenderloin, the chain, mm. or like the New York, that piece that has like that, like that little marbling in the middle. Yeah. All that meat went into buckets. Mm. Like about 15 or 20 buckets a week. My dad would come down here, pay him on the side, get the buckets and at my dad's bar they ground all that meat made hamburgers. The hamburgers were only like a dollar fifty back then. They were like straight prime filet, prime New York and they were half pound. Wow. Right from here. Yeah, I feel like your dad was ahead of his time. Now like yeah. Shake Shack and places yeah, yeah, like that, yeah. they're all into putting like dry aged sure. meat and stuff in yeah, there. They're, but... they're putting a pinch yeah. just to get the, <laughs> the credit of it but that whole, the whole hamburger was prime wow. for like, like I said, like a dollar fifty. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. All right, guys, after a not too long wait, I think it was about 10 minutes. Pretty good, considering that they're uh, in the peak of dinner service now. But we have our one more steak that I'm going to review, the filet mignon. And I am so glad that I decided to get one more steak because I am enjoying this restaurant so much that I did not want to only review one main course. And actually, if I turn it at this angle, it kind of looks like Texas, right? And I was in Texas for the Eagles Cowboys game in December. Let's, uh, let's not talk about that game. You know, the steak looks extremely tender. Okay. It also looks like it was cooked on a grill and not a flat top. But somehow the sear here, I don't know, it's looking more impressive for some reason. And this is a delicious looking filet mignon. So let's just dig right in, why don't we? Look at that. Medium rare, I think. What do you guys think? Or is that more on the rare end? All right, they specifically named this filet mignon on their menu. I'd like to think that perhaps back in the day, maybe Sinatra ate this more so than the garlic butter ribeye, which maybe is more of a modern twist. But let me know if I'm mistaken. Tender. I love the way this steak is cooked. Just delicious. It's so tender on the inside. It's got a great sear, a great crust. Nice and crunchy on the outsides. Tender on the inside, perfect combination. Oh man, just, just look at how tender it is. Just look at the way I awkwardly, you know, kind of impaled it here and just look at how soft it is, the way I'm pushing into it. But just like the ribeye steak, the flavor of the beef itself is just delicious. Oh my goodness, it's just, you can do everything else right. You know, good sear, good seasoning, cook it to the right temperature. But if you don't have good beef, you can only go so far. And they're just doing everything right here. Well, once again, nitpick, the sear on the bottom, less good than the sear on top. But like I said, everything is so good. You can't expect to get everything you want. This is just such a delicious, tender, amazing beef flavor filet mignon. And I gotta say, the best filet mignon I think I've ever had. 
And like I said, filet mignon is not always my favorite cut because of its lack of, you know, marbling and juiciness, which is the whole point, but I can make an exception for this. The best filet mignon I've ever had. Oh. But guys, we've eaten lots of steak on this channel. New York has no shortage of legendary and iconic steakhouses. I think this is up there with the best ones. This can hang with the best steakhouses in New York, and I think it's better than a lot of the iconic steakhouses of New York. I think in New York, this would be a top steakhouse. I see why Elvis and Sinatra like to eat here. And it's also cool that the steakhouse is pretty much unchanged since the 50s. You feel like you're really stepping back in time eating here, which is an added bonus. Golden Steer Steakhouse, my verdict, totally lived up to the hype. I would say this is one of the best steakhouses I've eaten at in a long time, if not ever. But anyways, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I thought I was full after that ribeye steak, but I'm gonna make some room for this filet mignon. Wow, delicious. Have you guys been the Golden Steer? What's your favorite steakhouse in Vegas or anywhere in the world that you are? Let me know in the comments because great minds eat alike. If you like my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. That way you stay up to date whenever I post another video. Until next time, I'll see you later.